in 1994. So, what year were you guys born? 27 years and the majority of the time was on Robin Island. So when I'm showing you the map of South Africa, there's a city that's on this side, Cape Town. Robin Island is a tiny little island, just like you can see it from Cape Town. And that's, it's like Alcatraz. It's a prison, it's just an entire island that it was a prison. Now, it's a museum. It's a what? It's, it's a museum. museum. Yeah. So this picture is of our tour guide when we went to this prison. And it was really weird, because this man was a political prisoner at Robben Island himself, with Nelson Mandela. And so what he does now is gives tours. Um, and yes? Why was he in prison? Why was he in prison? So during apartheid, Nelson Mandela, what did he do? Why is Nelson Mandela famous? Let's get blue all the way to the back. Yeah, so he was instrumental in dismantling apartheid. Um, who else? <laughs> who, who had something else? What about Nelson Mandela? Yes. Um, All right, you're getting to the Mandela I want to talk about. Yes. So. A lot, I know because Nelson Mandela, rest in peace, just passed away, there are a lot of memorials to him right now that are talking about his nonviolence and the way he, um, he brought peace to the Republic of South Africa. But back in the day, back in the 60s and the 50s, before he went into prison, the reason he went to prison is exactly that. He was vigilant about the fact that I am the majority of this country. I am indigenous to this land. I am an African person, and I cannot vote. I cannot make a decent living. And once people started organizing, and like, you know, doing the protests that we think of with the civil rights movement, doing peaceful protests, but also being attacked by the police, there were a lot of killings by the police in South Africa of people who protested. And a lot of times those people were very young people, like 14 years old. So it's um, kids like you, like your age in South Africa were saying, we've had enough of, of this. We don't want this anymore. And they were the ones that made a huge difference. So Nelson Mandela, we'll keep coming back to him. This man was in prison with him, but now he's a guard, or now he's a, whew, slip of the tongue. Now he's a guy at the Robben Island Museum. And the reason he said he's still there, he doesn't really want to be. He's still on Robben Island, but doesn't really want to be. But he's there because there's a huge unemployment rate in South Africa, like 60% unemployment rate at the time. And so to have a job at all, was good, even if that job meant reliving every single day of your life. The fact that you were in prison for trying to be a freedom fighter for yourself and your country. Hey, this is what the prison looked like from the outside. You kind of see on the right the South African flag. All you can really see is the red, green, blue. But we'll look at it closer. But it was weird because it was a rainy day. It felt fitting to be in such a sad place. Like I said, the South Africa was colonized by the Dutch, and so this is how you would spell Robin Island in Afrikaans. Uh, Robin means seals. 
And that's why they called it that, because there's a lot of seals around there. More pictures of the prison. Just depressing, cloudy. And so sad to think that someone would be in prison for so long because they just don't want their people to be killed. Because they want to just be able to vote. Because they just want to be able to participate in the economy like everyone else. This is the view from Table Mountain. And so if you're in Cape Town, you stand at the top of this mountain, you can see Robin Island. You can't see it in this picture because it's cloudy. This is a picture from Cape Town. I thought this one was cool because it kind of looks like San Francisco or some city in Europe. It doesn't. It, it was surprising to me because it's not what I think what Africa looks like. This, do you see the shout out? So this is in Cape Town, South Africa, across the ocean. I was just like looking out of the window of our hotel and there was a store called Colorado, which like, this is amazing. I have to take a picture of this. And I don't know if you can see it, but they had like an Indian like to the right as your logo. So I thought it was kind of interesting to think about like all the stereotypes we have about Africa and Africans, like like I said, drumming and like naked and uneducated and around the fire and singing their no-nonsense songs. But like all stereotypes are made up and oftentimes are used to oppress people. So the stereotype they have in South Africa about Colorado, about where we are right now, is Indians, like with feathers, and that's that's our legacy. Well, I mean, it's it's interesting because that's part of our mythology. Like the Wild Wild West is about killing Indians, right? It's about or like going out to the frontier just the way people did in South Africa. So they have a similar like story they tell themselves. So this is a notorious skyline. There are cities in Africa. Also in Pretoria. Hello, and um, just outside the city. So there are cities in, in South Africa, but a lot of people want to go Af to Africa to have an authentic experience. And authentic experiences have to involve like lions and like the outer Yeah, exactly. It's like safari. You gotta do that. You got pretty close. Um, they're kind of scary because they can just come out and charge you. They're like really deadly. They will crush you. Like you really will. Hippos kill more people than sharks. Hippos kill more people than sharks. Thank you. Does anybody know the nickname of South Africa? The what? Rainbow Nation. The Rainbow Nation. Yes. Thank you very much. No, what? The Rainbow Nation. So that's supposed to embody like all of the different colors of people coming together in harmony. And I think that's kind of cheesy, but it is what they tell themselves about themselves. What year was um, Nelson Mandela released from prison? Nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety he was released from prison. What year was he elected? Be in 2014 next year. So I know you got your ill math skills. How many years ago was 1994? All right, that's right. 20 years ago, most of the people in South Africa, all the black people, all of the colored mixed people, all the Indian people, none of those people could vote. And the people who protested were put in prison for decades at a time and killed. So that's huge. Um, that was an enormous deal for the country. And it wasn't a popular thing to support South Africa. Like, for instance, our country, the United States of America, was instrumental in helping apartheid continue for much, much longer than it needed to. And it was, it was a huge deal to stand up and say that you didn't think apartheid was a good thing. Now, when you read all the obituaries and everything, it seems like apartheid was always going to end. But at the time, that was not a given. So people like Nelson Mandela really were helpful in making that happen. So even 20 years after freedom and democracy, there's still people who are living in, in extreme poverty. This little boy, how old do you think he is there? Eight, five, six, yeah. So this was 10 years old. So imagine what he looks like now. I actually thought I'd pull up a picture. Um, so I'm just, interestingly 
straight up got an email from someone this morning who I went to South Africa with, and I really fell in love with this little boy while I was there. He was just, him and his mom, his mom was an activist. Um, she would do things for like poor women in their communities, and a lot of things for youth. And she was just diagnosed with cancer like yesterday. And so someone literally just yesterday emailed me about this little boy's mom. It was so weird because I was coming to talk to you guys. But the reason this woman has cancer, this is a picture from Wentworth. So you see this, this, um, this wall here, say no to drugs, say no to child abuse, a really cool mural that was done in the community. What's behind the fence? Do you see it off to the right? What, do you, what is that? The factory. Yeah. So when factories like make whatever they're making, what do they produce? Like what do they make? Pollution. Pollution. Right. And so you can even see it on the wall. You see it's like busted down the wall, like the concrete wall. That's how much pollution is in there. So this community has a huge rate of asthma among children, of uh, cancer. So this woman has been living within a mile of this oil refinery for her entire life. So sadly, it's almost, you know, by having to be a colored person, and, and still, to this day, we say it's a rainbow nation in South Africa, but there's still segregation, and there's still a lot of people who can only be in the areas where they've been restrict, restricted to since apartheid. This woman lives in a colored township, and she's basically had no choice but to get cancer just by living there. So that was a little deep to me, because like I said, it was, it was very nice to meet these people and work with them and see all the inspiring work they're doing. So this is Nelson Mandela's house in Soweto. So what, do you know what is Soweto or Soweto? Yes. Country? No. It's not a country. What is Soweto? Wait, what, what did you say? Soweto. Do you know what that is? S-O-W-E-T-O. -E Soweto is kind of like the Harlem of South Africa. It's where, in 1976, so this is while Nelson Mandela is in prison. While Nelson Mandela is in prison, there's still people on the outside. I, I, when Leah asked me to come talk about Nelson Mandela, I was kind of like, ah, I don't want to talk about Nelson Mandela because Sometimes we can invest so much in one person, like Nelson Mandela changed South Africa, but really, it was a movement of people. Like, imagine everyone in this room strategizing. That's what it was like. It wasn't just one person who led. I mean, definitely led, but it wasn't the only one. But this is his house in Soweto, where, in 1976, again, there was a riot. And kids your age, like literally your age, decided that they did not want to learn in Afrikaans, which is the language, what they saw as the language of the oppressor, the language of the colonizer, the language of the Afrikaners, the Dutch, who took over the country. Um, interestingly, I've always thought it was interesting that English was still okay, because Afrikaans is only spoken in South Africa. English is spoken work worldwide, so people were more welcoming of speaking English, even though that is also a foreign tongue in South Africa. So these students rose up because Afrikaans, all of their school was in Afrikaans. So their math classes, their science classes, social studies, everything they had to learn in this language that was used to oppress them. This language that only appeared when these people came from Europe and colonize this country. That's where this language came from. So it was a very heated thing. So these students rose up and said, we don't want to take this anymore. And they protested in the streets. And the police came in and shot down the crowd. Shot down this crowd of people your age. Not some guy who's crazy just by himself. The, the state, the government shot down those people because that's how badly they wanted to keep apartheid going. So Soweto was always a cultural center. That's where the music came from. That's where, that's, it's a township, but it's a very rich township. It's like, um, uh, like Brooklyn or something. It's like just a very, it's a cultural capital. And so Nelson Mandela lived there before he went into prison. 
and the country, the township stayed very lively and rose up. That was a huge deal in 1976 when, those, when all those kids died. Um, but his house is there, also very like, you know, it's a brick house, but it's not, this is just a regular person's house. He didn't have like a big fancy house. This one, this is his original home that he did not return to. This also became a museum. But it's not like this person was born rich. In fact, quite the opposite. He was born just a very regular, common person in South Africa and decided that he wasn't willing to take it anymore and he wanted people to help him and work with him. Um, these are some of his shoes. I just thought it was kind of cool thinking about walking in someone's shoes, especially someone so influential. Um, and this is in his backyard. This is just some corn growing. And I thought it was a nice metaphor for like, so especially now that Nelson Mandela's passed away, he planted a lot of seeds by helping to organize people, but if we really want to see things continue to grow, if we see other injustice in the world, that's our job now. We can't depend on one person to do that. So that's what I thought of this, the corn. And then back to the game, standing at the feet of, you know, of Nelson Mandela, who is a giant, but not, not the only person there. Not the only person who was affected by apartheid and not the only one who fought it. 